In this video, we will discuss the Toolspace Settings tab. If you'd like to follow along with the video, please open the file 0204 Toolspace Settings. DWG, located in the training folder discussed in the Working with this Dataset video. The Toolspace window is where the Prospector, Settings, Survey, and Toolbox tab reside. Civil 3D uses styles and settings to automate CAD standards and design settings within the Civil 3D environment. Civil 3D styles and settings are probably the most important aspect of Civil 3D. Having a good set of styles and settings defined before using Civil 3D in production will make it a lot easier for you to use it within your organization. Also, Civil 3D styles and settings are stored in a drawing template, an AutoCAD file with a .dwt extension, which makes it very easy for you to maintain your CAD standards or use Civil 3D with another client's standards. Civil 3D uses two types of styles, object styles and label styles. Object styles are associated to every Civil 3D object, such as surfaces, alignments, or parcels, and so on, and label styles are associated to the annotation of those objects for general Civil 3D labels. Let's go ahead and look at some of the object styles in Civil 3D and how they control the different Civil 3D objects. Object styles are edited through the Object Styles dialog box. Each Civil 3D object will have a setting that pertains specifically to that design object. For instance, in this file, I have a surface, an alignment, a profile, and a corridor. Let's go ahead and take a look at the surface style that's associated to this object. Before looking at the style, I am always asked, what is the best way to navigate through the styles? So in the Settings tab, which I have active right here, you'll notice that all of the settings and styles are categorized by design object, which make navigation to a specific style or setting very easy. For instance, as we mentioned before, this surface is using a specific style. So let's go ahead and select this surface first. And if we look at the context sensitive ribbon, we have a few surface specific tools available to us. And let's go ahead and go to the surface properties. Within the surface properties, you'll notice that we can actually see what style this is using. So right here, I can actually go ahead and click this button to edit it. But let's go ahead and navigate to it from the settings tab. So, in the Settings tab, I'll navigate to the Surface category, and notice how we have subcategories for Surface Styles, Label Styles, Table Styles, and Commands. If I expand the Surface Styles category, you will notice that these are all the styles in this drawing. Notice the little shortcut icon that is telling you it is being used somewhere throughout the drawing. This could be in another style, another setting, or within the drawing itself. As we looked before, we saw that the contours 1 foot and 5 foot background were being used by this surface. So, one thing I always say when it comes to the interface, when in doubt, right click. So, right click on that style and select Edit from the context menu. So, the Surface Style dialog box contains different tabs and each style dialog box will contain unique tabs and we will discuss this when we talk about alignments. So this is a surface style, so we'll have tabs that are pertinent to a surface object, like the Borders tab, the Contours tab, and so on. Well, let's go ahead and decide that we actually want to turn the points on for this style. So we want to see the points as well as the contours. This would not be mistaken with Civil 3D points. These are the points that are contained in the surface. I'll go ahead and toggle on the visible state here. And you'll also notice that you can set the different layers and properties for the subcomponents within the Civil 3D object. Also important to note is the view direction category. So when you rotate a view, AutoCAD Civil 3D has the ability to display Civil 3D objects in a different way based on the rotation of your view. If you look in the model view direction, this surface style will only display the triangles of this surface. In a section view, which would be like the existing ground and so on, it's going to actually display a section line with the color of red on layer 0. Let's change this back to plan, make sure we have points turned on, and I'll simply click Apply, and what you'll notice is that all the points have now been added to that surface style. So the surface style, again, controls exactly what is displayed for that specific object. I'm going to go ahead and turn this back off and click OK, and we're back to the 1 and 5 contours. Let me go ahead and hit Escape. Let's go ahead and look at an alignment style. So I'm going to zoom into my drawing. I'll select my alignment here. And another way that you can actually access the style is to simply right click right from the AutoCAD drawing view. And you'll see this edit style. In this case, it's an alignment right from the context menu. Again, notice how we have specific tabs related to the Civil 3D object that we actually selected. So this is an alignment. 
and we can change the different aspects of how that civil 3d object is displayed for instance let's say we want to turn on the directional arrow for this alignment i'll go ahead and toggle that on i'll click ok and now you'll see that you can actually see the direction for that arrow let's talk about civil 3d label styles so label styles are edited through something called the label style composer dialog box along with the text component editor dialog box and every civil 3d label uses these dialog boxes for editing so i'm going to zoom into my contours and notice that i have some contour labels displayed well let's say we want to actually change this label style because it's actually using too much of a precision so we actually want to get rid of the decimals so one way to do this is to simply select this and notice how this contour label line that's the type of object this is appears and i can go to the properties palette and notice how i can actually see what style is being used by this surface contour label so existing major label is the one right there and i could click the drop down here and edit it in this way or as I mentioned before, we can navigate through it in the settings tab and then notice how it's nicely categorized under label styles, contour, and then notice how we have the two label styles being used in this drawing. Again, the nice little orange shortcut there tells you that it is actually being used by some setting or object within the drawing. So let's go ahead and select that. Again, right click and edit. And here is the label style composer dialog box. It consists of five tabs information for the name and so on, the general tab which contains what layer and the orientation of the text, and the layout tab is the one that we're interested in. So this one here is where you can actually tell it how to display the label and what design information you actually want to display. So if I look at the contents parameters here, I can click on here and then click this little ellipsis button to browse into the text component editor. So once you get used to these two dialog boxes, the same two dialog boxes are used for every single label style. The only thing that's different is the properties that are displayed based on the type of label style that you actually select. So in this case, this is showing the surface elevation because it's a contour label style. So to make changes to this, I actually want to select it right there. Notice how this updates with the properties being used here. And I want to change this to have a precision of nothing. Now you might have a tendency to just simply click the OK button, but don't forget this is crucial to making sure the label style is updated. Click the arrow here to update the style with the settings that you've defined here. You always have to do that. In fact, if I wanted to add any other properties, I would simply select them and then click the arrow to add them into the text component editor label style. I'll click OK. And here's the great thing about Civil 3D. This is what's wonderful about this dynamic nature. If I click OK now, every single label that's using that label style will automatically update in the drawing. Let's talk about settings. The settings for Civil 3D have a top to down hierarchy level. What this means is that settings are defined in the main design object category and they will trickle down into the subcategories as well as into the commands themselves within the subcategories. The ones above will try to override the ones below, but the ones below always win. And what I mean by that is there are three types of settings. You have drawing settings, which are global for the entire drawing. You have feature settings, which are specific to the feature, but will initially grab the settings defined by the drawing settings. And then you have command settings. So each command has its own set of settings that allow you to then completely override any of the settings defined above and those settings will be used by the commands themselves. So to get to the drawing settings, you right click on the file name and go to edit drawing settings. The drawing settings dialog box contains five tabs. The first tab is the units and zone tab, which is used to define drawing and angular units, plot scale, and the coordinate system for the active drawing. The transformation tab is used to transform the coordinate system defined in the units and zone tab, if you do not specify coordinate system, then the transformation tab will be grayed out. The object layers tab is used to define layers for all the Civil 3D objects as they are created in your drawing. You can equate Civil 3D objects as they are created to blocks. The object layers tab is used to place those Civil 3D objects on this layer initially, and then any of the subcomponents are defined by the actual object style. However, this is a pretty powerful functionality because what it allows you to do 
is it allows you to actually define the specific layer that the object should go on and you can define these prefixes or suffixes that will append or prepend the name of the object to the layer defined here allowing the entire object to go on a specific layer. Again, this enables you to freeze or turn off the layer very easily. The abbreviations tab is for geometric type information. So things like PC, PT, etc. Note that these can also be overridden by some label styles as well. The ambient settings is the overall settings throughout the entire design file. If I click the expand all button here, you'll notice that I have uh, categories such as labeling, Unitless, distance, for instance, I tell it what unit I want to display and the precision I want to display in the command line. One thing to note, you'll see this child override column that's very common for all the different settings. And what that's telling you right there is that it's being overridden somewhere down the line. Again, there are three levels of settings in Civil 3D. So somewhere down the line, it's being overridden. Let's go ahead and look at feature settings. So if I right click on a feature category, I can go to the edit feature settings. And notice how this looks very similar to the ambient settings. However, you have some feature specific settings like the default style to use when you create AutoCAD Civil 3D objects. So this is the default style that will be used. What's the default name and so on. So that's a very nice way to standardize how Civil 3D will use the different types of object styles and label styles. Lastly, you can get right down to the nitty gritty command so that if you want to override a specific setting within the command itself, for instance, let's say adding surface contours, I can right click on this, go to edit command settings, and I can actually tell it the different settings here that I want to override, as well as you'll have some command settings. Notice the icon there that tells you this is specific to this command here. When you add surface contours, you are prompted for these settings, and you can tell AutoCAD Civil 3D what the default settings for this command should be. Not every command has its own set of command settings, but the majority of them do, and here is where you change them. Let's go ahead and talk about label style defaults. If I right click back up here, I can actually edit the label style defaults that are used for all labels in the drawing. Notice how every single one of these settings is being overridden, which makes sense because every property, whether it's a point label style, a surface label style, most probably will be different depending on what you are labeling. That said, if you have the need to override every single setting in the drawing with a specific, let's say, layer or style, you can actually do that right here. I simply click over here once. Notice how the X appears. If I were to click OK right now, every setting would be overridden with the setting defined here. So I could put all my labels on a specific layer or use a specific style. Lastly, let's talk about importing styles. So let's say you have the need to import some styles from a different DWT or DWG file. In the Manage tab, Styles panel, you have the ability to import styles from different DWG files. Let me go ahead and save my file first. I'll go to Import, and I can navigate to a specific DWT drawing template or DWG file to grab specific settings or styles. This will show or display the different styles and settings and you have a few of these really cool little toggles to toggle everything off and toggle all the settings off and so on and I can just bring in maybe the settings and some styles for a specific entity that I wanted. I would click OK and it would bring in those styles. What's also nice is the ability to purge out styles because AutoCAD Civil 3D will store all the object styles that are being used and not being used in your DWG file. So if you do not want all those styles in your file, you can simply purge them out and then you will no longer have access to them. Hence the reason you want to have a DWT file to always be able to go back to. This concludes this video discussing the tool space settings tab.